Okay, hi. Um, it's fantastic to be here. And it's, um, it's particularly nice to be here at um, an event like this when usually you, you generally get lots of case studies from cool American projects, um, generally to present one which I hope you think is a cool UK project. And not just a UK project, but a truly global project. And if you don't know what I mean by that yet, hopefully you will do in a minute. I think we're running late, of t late um, in terms of time, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through this presentation really quickly. It was initially, first started this as a Pecha Kushu presentation, um, which if you don't know what Pecha Kushu is, it's like 30 seconds per slide. Um, and as uh, this is the last time I'm going to present this presentation, I think to go back to that initial thing would be good. So if you uh, do bear with me if like, there's just far too much jargon in it. Um, so yeah, a swarm of angels. Let me tell you um, why I actually started the project and wanted to do it uh, because the blockbuster is dead. I wanted to actually target uh, the feature film but do it in a completely non-Hollywood way. Now when you look at uh, somebody like George Lucas who's saying that the blockbuster is dead, you know something is, is very wrong with Hollywood and um, you know we're in a really interesting time and space at the moment when Hollywood knows that things are broken but because it's a giant tanker you know, it takes a long time for these tankers to move and actually change direction. So this is a fantastic time to be a filmmaker, to be a cultural entrepreneur, cultural entrepreneur, because you know, the, at this time we can actually, while while Hollywood's uh, trying to change direction, we can actually move into that space. I think one of the problems Hollywood is having is because it's actually an industry which is built upon film. And um, you know, film is dead. You know, we're at the end of celluloid. Film is actually moving towards video. I wrote a book about this in about 2002. It came out, um, Film Futures in the Digital Age. So I recommend if you need inspiration for how film can change or your own, you know, particular projects, that um, you check out check out this book because it's still pertinent now. But I I have um, a quote from one of my favourite authors, William Gibson, at the start of start of the introduction to this book, um, basically saying how digital video is a new platform wrapped up in the language and mythology of an old platform of film. So again, how can we, how can we think about the end of celluloid and moving away from film and actually embracing video for what it is? Well, obviously, you know, some people are doing that. Um, there's a brave new world of user-generated content and, you know, uh, YouTube is the behemoth which is, you know, powering that forward. But, you know, I think, you know, we talked about it earlier in terms of aggregation and just filtering through that. You have to filter through a lot of uh, dirt to get to the diamonds in this user-generated content at the moment. Some people are bridging the divide between professional content and user-generated content. Um, at the top here, we've got uh, Robert Rodriguez as Sin City, and Steven Soderbergh, who's who's actually uh, in between his more mainstream projects. He's actually putting his more experimental work on file sharing sites. But these are, you know, filmmakers who've already made it, so it's easy for them to experiment. Then, kind of from the bottom up, from the user-generated content, obviously we've got the the poster child, the poster girl, that lonely girl, and uh, and then we've also got people trying to make money from that and so we've got EP bird we've got people who are blowing up coke bottles with mints to you know try and make some money from it so you know it's pretty difficult it's okay if you've already made it uh, you don't need to to think about the revenue but you know at the bottom there it's about how can we use that audience well you know how how can we also um, make professional content out of this but but really embrace the new media so this is kind of, for me, the missing piece of the puzzle, or at least one, one part of that puzzle, um, one part of that jigsaw piece, a Swarm of Angels. Um, it's the idea of creating a million pound film and giving it away to over a million people by gathering a global community online of 50,000 people to help me actually make it. So it's an open source film. Um, not only is it an open source film, but it's a way to create 
large-scale free cultural works. And uh, you know, Paul mentioned uh, you know, the idea of creative commons and using creative commons to actually distribute work and, and, and allow people to share it. So it's, it's about completely remixing the process of cinema, which you know, uh, historically has been all about trying to control the copyright and control the release of it and actually saying, no, we're going to build it from the ground up where it's, it's uncontrollable in a way. It's about giving it away. It's about allowing people to remix it, allowing people to interact and share it and be part of the whole process. And so we've taken the open source methodologies as well that obviously made things like Firefox such a great browser. And we try and apply it to filmmaking process and apply it to creative process as well, which is you know, quite different from obviously making software. And we're riding on a meme of, of uh, crowdsourcing, using the wisdom of crowds and also trying to steer away from the dumbness of crowds at the same time. Um, and I guess one way we can do that is uh, for it to be creator-led. So it's a way that uh, for a filmmaker to be actually empowered and to be their own gatekeeper, if you like. Um, but also work with members, work with um, what would you know, we normally call the audience uh, in traditional film, uh, and work with members to, to actually empower you to, to make the film. So this is a massive idea of collaboration as well. You know, we're in an age of, not only in a digital age, but we're in an age of participation. Now people, whenever I, uh, you know, first speak to people about this project and say, oh, you know, we're going to get 50,000 people eventually to collaborate and, and make this film. They go, oh, uh, it's ridiculous, you know, collaboration. It's a recipe for disaster. And um, I always say that, um, you know, in, in, a, in a kitchen, a kitchen needs a head chef. And, uh, you know, it's my process, so I, I want to be the head chef. But, um, you know, what I want to do is actually bring people into that kitchen who can, can help me make it and bring recipes into it and actually, you know, create some kind of different dishes here. And this model is a, is a flirt model which um, some Finnish student came up with, which, which shows you in a very kind of basic way how you can manage that collaboration, how it's not just a, a binary equation of a zero, you're like a complete collaborator or, or, um, or not, not collaborating at all, but actually, you know, the way people can collaborate in a very light way or people who, who you know, here we've got central, um, central area about the creators, people who want to, to actually be more involved and upload content and remix it and help you make it. And this is just another visualization of that, the power law of participation. And there's an emerging rule of thumb in user-generated content about 1% uh, of people who use UGC sites actually do upload and do share. But obviously, you know, much more, more people within these sites just like the idea of participation at particular opportunities, what I call participation points. And, um, and so they can tag things or can comment on them. So we're also kind of looking at this, this whole brave new world of co-creation as well. The fact that, you know, in this, this new media age, people do want to participate, but actually, you know, not everybody wants to, to make a whole feature film. So how can we create a process, uh, create a vehicle where people can plug in to creating uh, a feature film, like this big, massive, creative practice, uh, which they would never do by themselves. So here, for example, uh, is a visualization from one of the scripts that we're developing. We're developing two scripts as part of a swarm of angels. And this is uh, an image by Pala, which is actually going to be in uh, December's Wired, I think, now. And he's, uh, he's a Japanese uh, photographer uh, who I've known for a long time, but he wanted to get involved in the project. He would never have been involved in, in film at all, uh, generally. He's just, he just wants to focus on photography. But now that he's part of the community, he sees that his skill can be used and be part of it. And because I'm open to that, and because the community is open to that, you know, it's a great, great resource. And we can see that again here. Um, where uh, his, his photo was, uh, was, we took it and uh, put up on the blog that we wanted to create some poster designs from that. And I think uh, within about 10 days, we had 30 uh, different poster designs. 
So these things are all kind of released as we go along so people can be part of the process and part of the creation process. So allowing people to view stuff, to share stuff and to remix stuff as we go along, as we're making the film. Um, and we use Blip TV to show a lot of our moving image stuff at the moment. And what we did here, for example, is actually put up uh, three work in progress versions of the project trailer and uh, had a vote with our membership and uh, asked them uh, which one do you prefer. And this was completely uh, generated within the community as a high def trailer which is available for remixing. And at the moment that's just been remixed with all the people who are already members of, uh, of the project um, and uh, their, their names are going to be attached to the trailer, a bit like uh, Fire, the way Firefox had um, a double page spread in the New York Times where all the, all the donors for the project um, were kind of listed, listed on that. So it's just, you know, some kind of recognition of um, uh, the membership of uh, people being involved, even if they're not actively participating. And this is uh, how we're spreading the swarm. Because we're doing everything in a kind of very non-traditional way, uh, I've been practicing kind of anti-promotion. It's kind of funny that, you know, particularly with the la last case studies, everything is about um, audience and about a film has already been made. And how do you actually reach this audience and put it out there and cut through all the kind of marketing and the marketing dollars that Hollywood throws out there? How do you cut through that and, uh, and reach your audience? In a way, the way the way I'm building the audience is actually very niche, really laser in. Uh, for me, the mass, the, the mass market and the mass audience is dead. I just want to reach passionate users, um, you know, passionate audience uh, people and passionate members. Um, so it made sense for me to do that um, currently uh, and up to this point by, um, by going online, to reaching out to people online, to uh, the blogosphere, uh, to bloggers and to use social media sites, uh, social news sites uh, like Dig, and this was a momentous occasion. This was first Dig uh, went to the front page of Dig. Uh, you know, you get 50,000 eyeballs on your uh, on your site in one day. So that's a great way to kind of promote kind of specific things about your project. So this is the whole process. Um, so one of the things I didn't mention which I should have mentioned when I was talking about crowdsourcing, is actually this whole process is crowdfunded as well. So now, as we build up a membership, people to subscribe to that for £25. And I'm glad to see that there's some subscribers here in the audience. So thank you very much for already being part of it and help making, help making the project happen. Um, so people pay £25 to actually to participate and be a member of it and be part of the community. Um, and at the same time, this, this uh, you know, channels and powers the, fa the phases we run through, um, and, it, and it powers the generation of the media. But we have to synchronize that up as well with um, the membership growth, with the growth of the media, um, and uh, the whole development of the project. And at the moment, we're, uh, we're, we're in a holding pattern. I closed public membership at the moment, so we're in phase three of that. Um, and phase five um, is when we actually get the film made. So those are some of the elements in remixing cinema. Um, Time magazine last year said, you know, the person of the year was you. Uh, before that, it was always about them. And I think we're on the cusp of a new age where it's actually about us. Uh, so thank you very much. <laughs>